Okay, this is Dylan the Fire Alarm, and today we're going to have a look at a pretty interesting piece of equipment that I got. And right now you are taking a look at my shop where I do my electronics work. And uh, today, to analyze, we have this. Now, just by looking at it on the outside, you might think this is just a random suitcase or some kind of random wooden box to store something. But that is not the case. What you are looking at is a 1950s era Superior Instruments Company model TV-11 vacuum tube tester. As you can see, we will open it up right now. And as you can see, it is a tube tester made by Superior Instruments Company. It says, tube tester model TV-11 made in USA. So, we're going to be going through this tester and we're going to be testing a couple vacuum tubes. So as you can see right here, we have the big meter that will show replace and good. We've got the tube sockets. Right here we have our high voltage anode cap that goes on the plate. We've got our various selector switches that would select between the different pins on the tube socket. We have a nice roll chart. We have our load control. Our filament selector, our function switch, it selects my camera will focus. Focus. There we go. We have my function switch here that selects between shorts, or selects between line adjust, shorts, and your emission, which would read on the meter. You got your power switch, your line adjust, rheostat, and your switch that selects between tube testing or condenser, or modern term capacitor testing. You'd be able to test a capacitor. Uh, by sticking some leads in here. You have a noise test jack and then your shorts indicator. So this tube tester, uh, it's got some operating instructions on the uh, door there. Let's give you a look at that. And uh, you got your line cord on the side right here. And this is a pretty nice tube tester. This is one that I purchased on eBay and it's in uh, fairly good condition. Everything moves properly and works properly. So I'm going to reposition my camera here on my workbench so we can have a better look at this tester. Oh, I almost forgot. I think it might be a good idea to show you my vacuum tubes. Well, just a couple of my vacuum tubes. So here's a couple of my tubes that I've got that I'm going to be testing today. I do have some smaller ones that I can also test, some Zenith uh, tubes, but right now I'm just going to stick with these uh, tubes because they're listed on the roll chart. Uh, here we have a 35Z5, which is a rectifier. And here we have a Zenith 6SN7. And these are the two tubes that we are going to be testing today. And I have a whole box of them there, and then I have a whole bag of them back there. You can kind of see I have some more in that bag back there. So we're going to set my camera up here to position on the tube tester. And we're going to walk through the procedure on how to test a vacuum tube. I'm just going to try to find the best viewing angle here. I think I'll, this will be fine. I can always adjust camera as necessary. There we go. So, the first tube that we are going to test is going to be this 35Z5. It's a rectifier tube. Now, the first step to testing a 35Z5 vacuum tube would be to go to your roll chart and to look under the tube type and find 35Z5. So we're going to start to scroll down here until we find 35Z5 on the roll chart. And my camera is having a little trouble focusing on that. So we're going to scroll down until we find the 35Z5. 35A5, 35, 35Z6, 35. Let's find it here. There it is right there. 35Z5. Focus. Ah, it's having trouble focusing, but that is 35Z5. Right there. 35Z5. So it says the filament type is 35. So we're going to look on our filament control, and we're going to set it to 35 volts, as you can see right there. 35 volts. And then we're going to look here. It says F is going to go to 2. Or 2, rather, is going to go to F. So we find switch number 2, 
and we're going to turn it to F, which is all the way on the top. Okay. And then it says, switch number 3 will go to N. So we're going to find switch number 3, and we're going to put it to N, which is right here. And that is set. And now it says switch number 5 goes to P. So we find switch number 5, and we put it to P, which is right here. And then it says our load is going to be 3. So we're going to look on our load potentiometer, and we're going to turn it to 3. Make sure it's right on 3. Okay. So now this tube tester is set up to be able to test a 35Z5. And now we're going to grab our power cord out of the tube tester. It's just got a non-polarized two-prong plug on it. And we're going to plug it into any available receptacle. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug my power supply from my laptop, which I'm using to record this, and plug in the tube tester. Okay, tube tester is plugged in, and as you can see, the meter has moved to the center because the switch is in the position for line adjust. So what we do is we turn this until the meter is going to line up exactly in the middle there. See how we can adjust it? We want the meter to be exactly in the center. And that looks to be just about adjusted there. So now what we do is we take our tube, 35Z5, and we're going to line up the pins with the socket, and we're going to insert the tube in the tube socket. And now we're going to check to make sure the filament starts to glow. And I'm going to turn off the light so we can see that. As you can see, our filament is glowing on our tube, and our tube is glowing. So now what we do is we have to readjust our line voltage because the filament is going to put a load on the tube tester. So we need to be able to readjust this. And that looks about good. So now what, what we want to do, I'm going to position the camera back here is we're going to want to flip this switch to shorts. So we'll flip it to shorts and the meter will drop. And now we're going to have to pay attention to this light right here. We're going to pay attention to this light and we want to make sure that light does not stay lit when we move each of the switches that are in the K position up to the P position and then back down. So I'm going to set the camera down and we're going to do that for each of the elements of this vacuum tube. So here we go. And I'm going to be paying attention to this light right here. Right there. Okay, it blinked and that's okay. Blink, 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 and blink. Okay. Sorry, so now we can clearly see that this tube has no shorts. The vacuum tube is good because obviously if your tube has a short in it, you do not want to test the emission because you can burn out the power transformer the internal power transformer your tube tester. So you can damage the tube or the tube tester. So now that we have done that, we are going to flip this switch to the to the regular position up on the top, and that's going to show us our thermionic emission. So here we go. And now the meter is actually showing us how good our tube is. So as you can see, this tube right here is reading about 63 or 64, somewhere in there and it's in the green good range so we know this tube is good and if it was in the weak range it would tell you your tube was weak and you might want to replace it and obviously if it's in the replace range you want to replace the tube as it is getting too weak to operate properly so as you can see this tube is good so now what you want to do when you're done is you want to take the switch and put it back to line just like that and it's going to go back to line adjust and now you want to slowly take the tube out of the tube socket. So I'm going to put the camera down here. And we're going to take the tube out of the tube socket. Slowly and carefully. Just like that. And as you can see, our tube has now been removed from the tube socket, and we can set it aside. And now we want to reset our tester back to the default settings. So we're going to put the load control back to zero. And we're going to put all these switches back down to the K position and the filament will turn it down a little bit. And now our tube tester has been reconfigured for another tube. So now the other tube we're going to test, and the last tube we're going to test, is this one. And this one 
is a 6SN7. And I don't know if you can see it. It says it on the glass. 6SN7. So we're going to go on our roll chart here. And we're going to find 6SN7 on our roll chart. So we start scrolling up till we get back to the 6s. So we're looking for 6SN7. There we go, right there. So it's telling us that our filament is 6.3 volts, so we're going to set the filament control. 6.3, right there. It's telling us, so the camera will focus, that, s that switch number 7 will go to F. So we find switch number 7, and we put it to F, which is all the way at the top. And there is nothing listed for switch N. Or not switch N, but there's no switch listed for the end position. So none of the switches should be in the end position. And now we're going to look under the P position and we see that switch number one is going to be set to P. So we find switch number one and we set it to P. And it's telling us that our load is going to be three. So we're going to take our load control and put it back on three. Just like that. Okay. So now this tube tester has been configured for a 6SN7 vacuum tube. So we're going to go ahead and set the camera down here and we're going to take our tube and we're going to line up the pins on the tube socket and insert the tube in the socket carefully. And once we know the tube is securely in the socket, we're going to turn off the light and check to make sure the tube's glowing. It might be a little bit hard to see, but you can clearly see that the vacuum tube is indeed glowing. It's because hard to see on my camera. So once we know the tube's glowing, we'll turn the light back on. And just like the last tube, we're going to run through the procedure of checking for shorts. So I'm going to pay attention to this light, and I'm going to turn it to the shorts position and start moving these switches that are in the K position up to the P position and then back down again, observing the light and making sure it does not stay on. Okay, and this tube has checked out fine. So there are no shorts. So now we're going to flip it back up to general emission. And observe. Oh, geez. I almost forgot to do the line adjust. So, because that can affect the reading. So we need to go back to line. And we need to adjust our line voltage right to the line adjusts part of the meter. There we go. Now we will read general emission. And now it's showing us that our tube is good. But it's a little bit weaker than the 35Z5, but it's still a good tube. It's just barely in the green there. So this tube has definitely had some hours on it, but it is a good tube. So once we determine that, we will turn our switch back to the line adjust. And we'll set our camera down here. And we'll go ahead and carefully remove the tube from the tube socket. Just like that. Tube come out. Set the tube aside. And now we're going to reset all of our switches. To get a close look here, reset our switches back to the K position and turn the load switch or load potentiometer to zero. There we go. So that was a, a quick demonstration of my tube tester. And now we're going to unplug it and we'll watch the meter drop. Okay, so now the power has been cut on the tube tester and we will go ahead and put the power cord or the line cord back in the storage area for the tube tester. And that was just a very quick video on how to operate the Superior Instruments Model TV11 vacuum tube tester, testing a 35Z5 and a 6SN7 vacuum tube. So I will be making future videos about this tester in the future. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video about my Superior Model TV11 tube tester. Have a great, great day, everyone. Bye.